Arts Society here, and we have someone new with us today. Hi, I'm Kristen. Uh, in today's video, we're going to begin exploring a really important idea in drama called the Viewpoints Technique. The Viewpoints Technique was created in the 1970s by a woman named Mary Overly. The Viewpoints Technique is designed to help us break down performing into lots of smaller elements. A lot of the time when we think about putting on a show, it's really difficult to know where to begin. It's just so overwhelming. How can I tell a story? What story do I want to tell? What kind of character do I want to be? What's the relationship between my character and the story that I'm telling? There are lots of complicated questions to ask in theatre. What the Viewpoints Technique does is it breaks theatre down into nine manageable components. These components have been developed and refined over the last 50 years Today's video is only going to deal with one of the viewpoints. That one viewpoint is going to be spatial relationship. The first viewpoint comes under a big category. The big category is called space. So this category is all about how we use the space around us. The first thing that we have to be aware of in the first viewpoint when we're thinking about space is spatial relationships. So in this video that you're watching now, I'm explaining to Kristen how to use spatial relationships. As you can see, Kristen has stepped really close to me. This is a spatial relationship where Kristen has moved really close to me to make herself seem more powerful. Because Kristen is really close to me, that's an example of a spatial relationship. We're now stepping apart and our spatial relationship is changing. As you can see in the video, I'm giving Kristen some more instructions. This time, I've told Kristen to create a spatial relationship that makes us seem like she's in much less power than me. Kristen has moved away from me. She's sitting on the floor and facing away from me. You can immediately see that there is a dynamic of power between us here. There is especially a dynamic of power here if I turn to look at Kristen as I am now. That creates a feeling that I have a lot more power over Kristen as if I step towards Kristen and compress the spatial relationship and make the spatial relationship smaller, I seem more powerful again. There's a difference in the term spatial relationship depending on how close or how far away I am from Kristen. This is an example of the first viewpoint, spatial relationships. If at home or your residential provider or your provider for arts activities, you have a partner around you, you can try making some spatial relationships with your partner. Think about what happens when you're really close together or really far away from each other. What happens if you're angry with each other very close together? What happens if you're angry with each other very far apart? Have a think about how you can show who is more powerful through spatial relationships. If you find this really interesting, take a photo of yourself in a spatial relationship and then send it to us so that we can see what you're doing. But if you don't have a partner, there's also an option. You can demonstrate your spatial relationships with an object instead. Here's Kristen on the screen working to show spatial relationships now. So here Kristen is sitting on a chair now. Sitting on a chair is a spatial relationship. Now Kristen is moving and changing her spatial relationship. In this spatial relationship, Kristen seems interested in the chair. Her legs are also roughly the width of the chair apart. Now that Kristen's close to the chair, she seems very interested from close up. Now let's see what happens if Kristen is really interested in the chair, but from a far away distance. This is an example of how spatial relationship changes the way that we perceive an emotion. From far away, Kristen's character seems less interested in the chair than when Kristen was close up before. Even just being far away in the corner of the space 
means that Kristen's spatial relationship in relation to us, the audience, is really, really interesting. Look at what Kristen is doing now. What kind of spatial relationship do you think that this implies? To me, it seems to imply that there might be somebody missing from the chair. Maybe Kristen is upset that they are missing. Maybe Kristen is annoyed or angry that they haven't arrived in the chair where they would normally be. So as you can see, spatial relationships create easy ways to communicate fast.